as we're going to give a pilot report, we want to note down where we saw the weather that we actually want to report when we make the report. It's helpful to note down <clears throat> our aircraft's location right then so that we have it when we make our report a little bit later. Okay, so in looking at this pirate, I'm gonna actually break this down right here. Remember, we wanna note where we saw the weather, not where we are right now necessarily. And we can give it in terms of a fix or of a route. So as this example right here, we have that we were somewhere near the MEM, so Memphis VOR. And then this is how we read this part. We are on the 162 degree radial at 45 nautical miles. Remember, distances are given in nautical miles unless we're looking at visibility information. So we can do it if we're right over a fix. So say we encountered the weather conditions right over the the VOR, then we would report it like this, Victor Whiskey Victor VOR. Or this could be, so here we are on the 130 degree radial from the Gregg County VOR at five nautical miles away. Over the, this is an airport. So here we are not referencing a VOR, but it has K in front of it. So it's an airport and we're our north. We're on the 360 degree radial at 10 nautical miles. Or we can have on a route. So between two airports, we can also just have a fixed location. It doesn't have to be a VOR. In the remarks, we can give some more details. So you might see something like this over Janney intersection on Janney 5 arrival on the PMD transition. Then looking at the next part, we have what time that this was observed. So in UTC of the event, not of when we made the report. So we have observed this happening at, in this report, 1209Z. And then we have our altitude in hundreds of feet in reference to mean sea level. So this one would be at 35,000 feet referencing mean sea level, okay? Now, every PI rep is going to say FL, which would maybe lead you to think, oh, they're all in the flight levels. No, we could even be down lower. So you might see something like FL025, Five, and that would mean that we are at 2,500 feet MSL. We're not at 25,000 feet, so 2,500 feet MSL, okay? Um, it's also where you encountered the weather, not where you are right then. Sometimes we see this one, FL unknown, and as we remembered from the previous video, that says, I don't know what flight level we were at when we encountered this, or the pilot just emitted it when they were giving the pyre up. It's still useful to have the pyre up even if we don't know what flight level or what altitude they were flying at. Then we have the type of aircraft. They are going to use the TP beginning and then the FAA type designator. So for this, I just know it's a 737-800. Some of them are really obvious, some of them are not so obvious. You don't need to have these memorized. It is helpful to know if it's a large aircraft though or a small aircraft. Why do I care? You know, if a 737-800 reports um, severe turbulence, that's probably gonna be a lot worse. I would say extreme level turbulence for a Skyhawk or a Cetabria or a lot smaller aircraft. So we care about this for the reason of turbulence, we care about it for icing. If a 737 says it's picking up severe icing and it has a lot of um, ice protection systems, I am really gonna be concerned about that if I'm flying a King Air, for example. Okay, then we go on to our SK part. So that's our sky coverage part. And so this pyre up that I have as an example doesn't have that part included, it doesn't have to. Um, but we use the same type of thing. We are referencing mean sea level heights. Coverage is given. And then if we see SKC, that means human observed that sky is clear. So sometimes there is some detail in the remarks. Um, as an example here, um, we could see something like this. And I'm just going to write one down. We ha could have something like after SK, we could have overcast 
like this, 076110, um, that is going to be giving us the cloud layer thickness. So this person saw sky conditions were overcast from 7,600 feet MSL up to 11,000 feet MSL. Remember, we're referencing MSL here. We are not referencing AGL, okay? So remember in a PIREP, we are referencing mean sea level. Sometimes you see something in the remarks um, saying that they're on top of the clouds or below a layer or something like that. Then you have the weather group <clears throat> that isn't, again, it's not included in this example, Pyrep, but I've got another one coming up. FV would be our flight visibility and is given in statute miles, as I mentioned before. You can sometimes see this one, FV99SM. That just means it's a code for unrestricted visibility. They, they can see a very long way, maybe not really 99 miles, but it's unrestricted visibility. Weather conditions can also be included in here, such as precipitation types or other restrictions to visibility like smoke, haze, mist. Um, these are, again, the same coding as a METAR. That's why we have been emphasizing you need to learn your METAR abbreviations because they come up all over the place. All right, so here we have an example, um, and I will zoom in over here, of a PIREP that was given. <clears throat> and it's from the Aviation Weather Center. You can see it here. So we'll follow along. We've got a, the information about the weather here. Our flight visibility is unrestricted, but they did report haze, and we had smoke. There's that abbreviation for smoke from 5,000 feet MSL, and they had the tops of that smoke layer at 8,000 feet. All right, next part of our PIREP tells us our temperature. So TA, I sometimes just remember this as temperature aloft. We are given in degrees Celsius, like a METAR, and we have the M convention, like a METAR. So this tells us that it's negative 46 degrees Celsius. That's pretty cold, but if I look at what altitude they're at, yeah, it makes sense. They're at flight level 350, they're at 35,000 feet, okay. Then we have our wind group, just like a METAR, this is text weather, so it's supposed to be given in degrees true. I can't say for sure that everybody always does that that way, but it's supposed to be given in true. So this is saying that it's 197 degrees true. Speed is given in knots, so 23 knots. Turbulence level, so this aircraft has said it's just smooth, so that's nice. Good ride there at 35,000 feet. This table here comes from AIM, so our Aeronautical Information Manual in Chapter 7, Section 1, we get this, Turbulence Reporting Criteria. <clears throat> Don't memorize this table. However, be aware, if you are encountering turbulence, um, this is how we are going to categorize it. It's not just made up by however the pilot thinks. They even give specific examples of what happens inside the aircraft when we are at these different levels of turbulence intensity. So take a look at this. Be aware that is found in AIM Chapter 7, Section 1. Next part, we have icing. So remember when we talked about the icing, if we have neg, that's important. Icing was forecast, but it's not actually present. So we have our intensity of icing. Trace, light, moderate, severe. These are again in AIM chapter seven. You can look up a table of icing intensity. You don't need to memorize it, but be aware that it is there and that we can find these intensities by looking at that table. We're also gonna include the, um, the type of icing that's being encountered as far as rhyme, clear, or mixed. Three things that you should remember from our talk about icing.